Westside, Westside, Westside. Yeah, they got yeah. it bumping. Hey. We on the top, woo, woo. 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 Had to get it with my guys, never stop, woo, woo. Mr. Goins. All right, guys, here's another episode of uh, the podcast. I don't know the name yet of it yet, but um, <laughs> we got uh, a, a longtime friend of mine, Mr. Don Wallace. Uh, you, you might know him from uh, NCIS Los Angeles. Yep. And he will be on this year's uh, season of All American. Um, how are you doing today? Last season? season, actually. Last season, last season. Yeah, yeah. My apologies. <laughs> yeah, what's up, brother? How are you? I'm I'm hanging in there, man. You know, just trying to knock this stuff out. Enjoying the weekend. You know, the, the weekend's right around the corner. You know what I'm saying? Enjoy it right at last, brother. It, it goes fast. Listen, it's the first. It's gonna be the first weekend in a while that I don't have to actually be at American Airlines Center uh, watching a Mavs game in person <laughs> because they're here. So you know, I'm kind of enjoy the week while they're out there on the West Coast trip. They got Portland little back tough. to back. <laughs> Those airlines haven't been doing too well either. So no, 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 no. Uh, uh, <laughs> Southwest has got lines at the door. People are stranded at the airport. You know, oh, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Out here. crazy. It's crazy out here. It's crazy. And then they had like some shortage with technology that they got fixed. So they had to land all types of planes and stuff like that. So yeah, I like guess, you know, everything like around. all the computers went down or something like that. Some type of software. That's what it was. So crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy man. But um, but yeah, man. How 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 have you how have you been? I'm well, man. I, you know, I'm staying busy as as per normal. Um, writing, acting. Uh, just finished. Uh, we just been in the post production for a, f- a feature film that I did called Death in Ojai. Okay. Um, and it's a drama that I shot with uh, this fantastic director, Philippe Kaland. He, uh, we shot it in Ojai. It's basically about uh, a millionaire studio exec who kind of spirals during COVID and he finds out who he really is when he loses everything. Um, and I play uh, his executive who, who works for him and I basically run the company for him. But the film is dark and humorous and it, it, it's grounded in truth and allows you to kind of take a look at yourselves, it allows us to look at ourselves who we really are, you know. Um, it's a very interesting film, so I think that's we're going to try to run that through a few festivals at some point, and uh, hopefully get a, a nice release somewhere. We'll find a, a platform or something. Okay. So you you mentioned that you were on All American last year. Can you mm-hmm. explain? Well, it, let us know exactly how that was like, because obviously they're in. Well, last year was your season four, but. Right. There, you know, it's one of the uh, it's it's one of the most popular shows out right now. Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, it was it was a fun show. Um, uh, I mean, a fun experience for me. Um, it's obviously it's uh, only a few episodes, so I you know I, I assume it could go anywhere. But uh, I, I played uh, the owner of a gym that um, kind of catered to uh, the, the the lead actor of the show. And um, it was kind of like a, a safe haven for him to, uh, you know, prepare for his mm-hmm. football games and so forth. And um, I just basically played, uh, you know, the, the nice guy, Mickey, <laughs> you know, who kind of, Gave a little uh, comfort to to you know him and several players of the show, and it's just a, a kind of like uh, all American is a, a very um, dynamic show that's full with full of range. Uh, I was allowed to kind of be a little bit of a, a balancing act between you know the conflict that he might have been going through and and um, allow allow a, a nice kind of a positive image. For, for our culture, so to speak. You know what I mean? It, it was fun. Um, um, how I guess you obviously you got to work close with um with uh, Spencer James, aka Daniel Ezra. Yeah. Um, how how was that experience? And also you got a chance to work with uh Karima Westbrook again. Uh how was that experience? Here's the thing, my all my scenes were, were with uh Daniel and he was a, a, an amazing guy, really solid actor, 
really cool dude. Uh, the thing that we have in common, we were both born in London because I was born in London. He's like real British though, because he kind of grew up there. I just was born there and raised in New York, but uh, he was a really solid guy. I didn't have any scenes with Kareem and Kareem and I had worked on several projects in the past. So we're old friends and she's an incredibly talented actress. And she just, I I'm very, very happy for her because she's hugely successful on this show. And she's, she's so important to the show and to, to so many people watching because she's, she's built up such a, a tremendous fan base just by her, her sheer talent. But I mean, knowing her from a personal uh, standpoint, she's, you can see why people love her. She's just a very open and warm person. And uh, you can't help but support somebody like that. You know what I mean? I, I guess uh, being, I know you guys have worked on many projects, but just like from the beginning till now, like what, where have you seen her grow as an actress? Man, you know, she's done so many different um, films and, you know, just, just, my personal opinion, I've, I remember working with her maybe like 15, 16 years ago on a feature film that we shot in Georgia. And it was a comedy. And she, she was just, she played, uh, I believe it was a student. And uh, we, I think we may have had one or two scenes together, but most of our scenes were with someone else. She was, she was incredible then. I mean, you know, she was just super talented then, but to, you know, knowing that she's done a lot of, a lot more dramatic roles, like you could see the range, like she had from then to doing like the Pirates of the Caribbean and, and to all of the last dance. I mean, it's she... yeah, she's, she's a, a very dynamic and beautiful actress. So I have a lot of respect for her and she's, you, 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 in terms of watching the growth, I've always been impressed with her. So she's just gotten even better. She was always great. And to me, she's just gotten even better. And when I see her do, you know, her scenes on All American, it's, it's just Kareem and she's fantastic. She, you know, she just, she never bores you. She's always, you're always surprised to see whatever, things her character can uncover. She's she's pretty amazing. So and then I I wouldn't be remiss without asking, uh I know that um what was it like working with uh Tay Diggs uh on the show uh, just in I, general being around him if you if you had an opportunity to you know just I, I never I we didn't have any scenes together. I, I love Tay Diggs is acting. He's a really phenomenal actor. We follow each other on social media and so forth, but like uh, I never got an opportunity to work with him. Like I said, all my scenes were with, with Daniel uh, exclusively, um, and um, just making a few, you know, uh, speeches where there there might have been several other supporting actors there. But I never got the opportunity to to do a, a, a and, and scene with Tay Diggs himself. But his work in general on the show is just, you know, it's Tay Diggs. He's like he's grounded in truth, solid actor, and you know, a, a really nice guy, you know. And then obviously the show is about uh well it's it's based on the life of um Spencer uh Pace Singer. Mm -hmm. You know, uh just what was it like meeting him for the first time and just yeah, just just working with that whole collective it, behind you know, the scenes? It was cool, you know, it's like it, it, the thing about just being in the studio and, and working on shows, you know, yeah, you, I, I think obviously the, the series regulars and so forth have a lot more camaraderie because they're there every day. They know each other and this, that, and the other thing. Uh, recurring like myself, there's obviously not that intimacy, but it's yeah. very professional. I found him incredibly professional and, and just a super nice guy, in, just incredibly talented patient and you know the, the the thing that i love about you know a lot of the actors that i get to work with and, you know, which i look at as an opportunity all the time because you know to get to do this for a living is to me is just it's it's really a gift you know because you know how hard it is mm -hmm. business the challenges but 
you know, I, I just find that, you know, so many actors are just really good down to earth people. He count, he comes there to do his job, you know, and, and listen and do it right. And, you know, going about his business and, and that, that's, that's what it's about. You know, he's grounded in truth. He does his work. He's, you know, obviously does his homework. It's not like you're sitting there doing a million takes. You know what I mean? He's a, a very, a very uh, talented actor. And I, I expect to see him a lot more. Um, also, um, what, what's, um, what's going on on the NCIS side? I know you said that you're, you, uh, you're, uh, transitioning and getting back into the show. Like what's going on that side? And uh, yeah, I mean, everybody, Danny, Eric, Christian, Olsen, Todd, everybody is just so super cool. Um, the, the executive producers, the showrunner, the Frank Military, uh, Scott Gimmel, they, they're just really great guys. Um, and my character, I, you know, I, I play a senior chief Navy SEAL officer. Um, I should be back next season sometime, but um, uh, this season rather. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it, that is probably one of the finest shows that I've worked on because the camaraderie and the level of talent and the... Uh, the warmth of the show alone makes you feel so comfortable. Everybody's so incredibly talented and they make you feel that you're, you're home, you're welcome. You know, there's never that uncomfortable feeling like, oh, here's a new guy on set or something like that. They, they're incredibly um, warm and generous group of people. And everybody, Eric Christian Olsen is crazy funny. Um, Todd, he's from, He's from around my neighborhood, so <laughs> Todd is like just Elle is just down to earth, super cool, just super talented. I mean, you work with the goat, you know what I mean? Yep. And Caleb Castile is is an awesome guy, very very talented guy. Um, and just you know, sometimes you you know you a guy like me, I can bounce from set to set or whatever, and and um, work with different people, but I. Can honestly say to me that's that's home base, you know. It's people that you're just familiar with and you love, and you know, they make you feel welcome. So I'm always good with that. Is there a role or a show that you would like to get on at some point? Like, is there a role that you haven't played that you would love to play? Uh, things, you know, just just down that line. Man, there's so many. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. I think um, Godfather of Harlem, I love, um, I love Succession, um, fantastic show. Um, man, there, there, there are quite a few. I, I, you know, I, I like BMF, 50 Cent show that, you know, I, I love the grittiness and the, the honesty of those particular shows. Um, Forrest Whitaker is a beast. He's a monster. I, I, I'd love to work with uh, a guy like him, an actor like him. Um, there, there, there are quite a few shows, but I think those are probably shows that I think I'd like to reach maybe this year. We, we, we'll see. <laughs> you know, what I, mean? I mean, you said BMF on, you know, pa you know, powers right down that alley as well. So, I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll take that power street. <laughs> Especially being right in the back, your backyard. I mean, you know, the yeah. New York side of things, you know, that's yeah. where you started, so. Yeah, I still got a place in New York, so I'm here, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, did you get a chance to see the uh, the tank fight last week? I know you're you're a former professional boxer. Did, did you yeah. get a chance to catch that? Yeah, uh, Garcia was a game fighter, but tank was – that you you know you saw by I think like by the fourth round you just saw Tank warm up and the speed and power was just there you know I I don't know you're not taking anything away from Garcia he was game and he was a, a good fighter but you know you fight Tank is you know he, he was just next level he was just next level and I think it was too much for him. And after he got that hit in the head and he's like, Oh, I couldn't see he was mm -hmm. blind or whatever, or at least temporarily. Um, I think that was tank made a big statement and he made a big statement to Ryan Garcia. Like, 
you're yeah. next type of thing. <laughs> pretty much not, not to quote Goldberg or anything but you you that's the fight everybody wants to see yeah that's the fight that everyone wants to see um you know uh, and, and look don't sleep on Ryan Garcia he's got a sick right hand he's 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 a nice he's got some nice speed but I, I personally think the combination of tank speed and timing and power is uh, maybe a little, maybe a little too much. I think Tank, Tank, Tank will get it by an edge. Whether it's a decision or whatever, I'm not sure. But Tank will probably, yeah, I think you, you probably edge him out. You know? Do you think that that I, I forget who uh, the major person is on the other side? But Spence, there's the, there's the that fight with Spence that everybody wants to see. Spence um, and Crawford. Yeah, with Crawford. Yeah. With Crawford, just, just just your thoughts on that. Do you see it happening? I know there's kind of been a breakdown on each side. They say that yeah. Crawford can't really sell tickets, you know, in certain places, you know. Uh, you know, here's the thing. I, I I do think that 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 would be the fight of the decade. Like that is the fight that every fight fan wants to see. I think Spence is a an absolute monster in the ring. And I think Crawford is an absolute monster. I think, you know, when you get a fighter like that, that's reminiscent of Ali Frazier or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, um, Sugar Ray Hagler. I mean, that-, that Mike that's Tyson Holyfield, you know, the first time Holyfield. and the second yeah, time. That's, yeah, that, that's the fight that everyone wants to see. That's the fight that everyone, every fight fan is really craving for. Um, I was a little disappointed in seeing um, uh, Crawford take that fight on that app. Um, I don't think it generated the numbers that it should have or they wanted to, per se, but um, I, I, I'm kind of disappointed that the, 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 the negotiations broke down. You know, I really am because I feel that, one, they could – Obviously, we negotiate and get that fight going again. Mm -hmm. but two, when it goes, it, it's going to be big. And and I may I may be a little biased in saying this, but I, I think I think Crawford might you know win this fight. I think Crawford will edge it out. He's he's a, I think the difference between maybe maybe a, a Spence and a Crawford is Crawford maybe a little meaner in the ring. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Spence is an absolute beast, like I said, but. It, Crawford may is the timing is a little more there to me. I you know style makes fights, so I, I'm not sure exactly what the outcome would be, but I'm leaning towards Terence Crawford. I th I think they were saying it well when they when they said it was official and then they it, talks broke down. It was supposed to be in Vegas. I think that would be a mutual site because obviously in the Dallas Metroplex, that's obviously home turf for for Spence. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, so. We'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, you know, like people, like you said, people want to see it. Um, people also want to see Ryan Garcia versus Tank, especially with all the, you know, the uh, the back and forth over the last year and a half. Yeah, it's, so. it's been it's been a, a heated uh, debate in terms of, you know, seeing who, who who's going to come out on top. But I hope they all find a, a way to negotiate because, you know, a lot of times when you look at these boxing matches now, it's not even the fighters fighting, it's the promoters fighting. It's the promoters. It's kind of like jockeying for position, jockeying for money. And like, you know, you could say what you want about the 90s or 80s or whatever, but fighters fought each other. You know, they found a way to make it happen and, you know, do a, a two and three. You know, Reddick, Bro, Holyfield, all those, you know, guys, they, they found a way to make it happen. So, you know, I'd like to see something like that you know, jump off here. Would you like to see Nate Diaz and uh, Jake Paul get into the ring together? Is that something that you would be interested in? And, I, you know, I got to be honest with you, bro. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't mess with Jake Paul, man. I mean, it's just like, it's like kind of like a paper fighter. You know what I'm saying? When you getting like, you getting put in there with dudes that are like 40 years plus and, you know, ex champion some dude just jumped off a parachute and lands in the ring it's like come on man you know what that's about. it's like you know I, I i definitely i don't respect that like i respect real fighters to me and if you're a real fighter then you know you you're gonna get in there and put in that work like real fighters there's lesser fighters who don't have the publicity 
that would, you know, easily take that dude out. And I'm not, that's not smoke. That's just fact. Mm. You know, you know, you go to Kronk, you go to Gleason's gym in New York, there's guys out there like, yeah, all right, I'm your weight. Let's do this. And they they kind of, you know, when you handpicking fighters, you know, it, you know, whatever it is, what it is, right? It's business. How often are you still training? I know, I mean, are you using it for like workout purposes or are you just? I just work out. I'm just, I hit the bag. I got my heavy bag. You know, I, I run, I still run every few days, you know, at least three, four times a week. Um, I hit the heavy bag, do some weights. I'm just, just trying to stay alive, keep breathing. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's nothing serious. I doubt very seriously if I have any ambition in coming back to the ring and, and trying, <laughs> trying. I didn't. I wasn't trying to force you in that direction. <laughs> you, know, you know, you still getting those eyes. Yeah. But no. um, if you if you had to pick, who would you want to uh, uh, to play as far as you know a biopic? Is, is that something that you know you would like to add to your resume at some point? Oh my God, I, I played uh, Jack Johnson in the Producers Club. I did a play. Uh, years ago, and I would love to play the role of Jack Johnson on film. That would be my dream, you know? That would be a dream, because to me, that's one of the my most iconic fighters in history. So Jack Johnson, hands down, that would be it. I got a bald head, so. You know. <laughs> Hey, not the Stephen A, right? Not the uh, yeah, right, right. No, I ain't got that. <laughs> Although <laughs> you never you and Shaq were kind of funny going back and forth with each other. When Shaq, you know, put the uh, what oh you know God. the that was hysterical. That was hysterical. But when Stephen just did the pinky uh, scene, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was that was pretty. Uh, that was pretty funny. Stephen's a funny dude. Uh, Shout out to Stephen of, Smith, uh, Hollis, <laughs> Hollis Crew, for real. <laughs> Hollis uh, speaking of speaking of basketball, since we're on that subject, uh, have you been have you been watching this season at all? Um, in regard, you know. And look, man, I've been watching my Knicks, man. I've been watching my Knicks. I didn't want to bring it up, but you brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I gotta say, man, at least okay. Well, we had like the four four game winning streak. Yep. And then it kind of, you know, kind of fell to whatever. Well, uh, I mean, I, I, I'll I give you guys some credit. You know, Brunson was hurt. He missed that Dallas game when he was yeah. out of here. Yeah. Right. Um, I think he's, he changed the, he's changed the team. Mike. Yeah. He's changed the dynamics of the team. He's he's allowed, I think, Randall and everybody else to step their game up hard. You know, they've changed the rotation and – I think he's he showed himself as a real leader. You know, I think like people were saying prior to the season, like who do you think would if they were on a different team that could actually command and maybe be an all star at least one time, right? Brunson, I was like, if he could ever get out of Dallas, mm -hmm. I mean, we don't want to talk about how he got out of Dallas, but you know, <laughs> if he could ever get out of Dallas and actually get on his team that you know that was decent, he could be a, a, the general that that team is missing, and it looks like it's 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 uh, actually helping your Knicks. Um, yeah, I think he's helped the Knicks tremendously. I just I just feel like we need one more star, just one, and with Brunson combined. Um, Randall playing the way he's Randall's playing a lot better than he did last season. Um, Mitchell Robinson is is really active. That contract must have <laughs> helped him out a little bit because he's he's doing really well. I'm I'm happy with the way these guys uh, uh, are looking right now. But it's just we just need that one thing, that one that one player that's going to allow them to really have a perfect fit. And mm -hmm. I think could be we could be looking at something but you know obviously it, the, the team is what it is i Thibodeau, i, I don't know man I just, well, he's gonna run it. we know he's gonna run, we know he's gonna run his players into the ground that's just i mean i'm not this is not me hating guys this is me yeah. it, I think uh, he's uh, saying what, old what school, the others in the league are telling me you know he's too old school yeah he's too old school man he like not it seemed to be stuck in like a decade where you know that he's not ramping up the plays or, or or not rotating the plays right to me. I just that's just me. But 
Well, I mean, he like I said, he's playing people into you know that you know extra hard. There's some players on the team that you know that are not getting any PT, like um, yeah. like um, Cam Reddish. He's not getting no PT, but he's you know, but to his to his to his, to his um, uh, praise, he when he came here, he was one of the first people out, you know, shooting with the shooting coach. Yeah. Still, you know, still trying to put his, you know, his game, you know, improve yeah. his game. So if you know when his number was called, he's you know he can get out and do what he needs to do, just like he did in Atlanta before they you know traded him. Um, when they, I forget who they, I think it was the Bucks or maybe yeah. the New Jersey Nets or somebody yeah. that I mean not New Jersey, sorry, Brooklyn Nets yeah. that he had that great game while everybody else was struggling. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So after he came back from injury, so. Yeah, you know, I don't know, man. I, and I feel bad for him because he's not getting <laughs> playing. He's, he's not getting no PT. I mean like, he's not. Like it's 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 kind of sad, you know, and he's young, you know, it's like what you what you waiting for? You know what I mean? Which, can- I, I love D Rose, but he's not gonna be able to play forever. you you know what I'm saying? Like Jimmy and these guys that Thibodeau is 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 happy to be playing with, you know, Todd Gibson. Joe Kim Noah, those guys. I mean, if they're not already out the league, they're yeah. You know, they're but, you know, the, thing, you know what I mean? the thing I love about D Rose, what he does for the team, the inspiration that he brings to the team, the experience and the leadership that he brings to the team. I think that's part of the reason why they they kind of they had that what seven eight game winning streak prior, and then they mm-hmm. got. Four. I mean, that's I think he's part a big part of the reason why they they are uh, stepping it up because I think he. He does, and he, his experience alone inspires those guys. And he's like, bro, he's not. I don't think he's just, you know, there to 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 warm the bench and get a check. I think no, he's, he's yeah. actually putting, you know, putting the work in. And people, yeah. people, and when he gets on the court, he sets up some beautiful plays. Yeah, D Rose, and, I got a lot of respect for D Rose, man. And it's 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 hard to have somebody of D Rose caliber, former MVP. Mm-hmm. And accepting his role, unlike you know some other people that we know, yeah, you know what I'm saying. He's gonna get in the way, and yeah, he's, he's not gonna get in the way if it's like possible. But, look, but said yeah. person that that I'm referring to is actually embracing his role off the bench. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. he's allowing. Yeah, last year oh, was kind of what's it called, but now it's looking like it's connected. It's not him, you know, because he's he's providing that spark off the bench. Yeah, for the city that you're in right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, it's not his fault. You know? my tea, so. man. I ain't gonna... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I mean... just, you know, these are just topics around the league. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you know what it is. That person, I'm talking about Russell Westbrook. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he's, yeah. Um, he's in, you know, the running for Sixth Man of the Year this year. So, I mean, you know, yeah. How many, how many MVPs in NBA history? You know, former MVPs come. You know, uh, is able to transition off the bench. And True. become a six man of the year, and still, you know, still be bring that, um, yeah, that type of role to a team. So, yeah. you know, um, you know, all the jokes aside, Russell Westbrook is having a great season for the Lakers, yeah, coming off the bench. Really well. After yeah. you know, people are saying, how, "What are you going to do with you know? How can they mesh with with the situation they have over there?" You know, uh, I think a little time and growth. Uh, you know, sometimes you got to look within, man, and you you start seeing, you know, who you really are. And I'm happy for him. He's 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 doing really well. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. Other than acting, writing, directing, you know, Mr. Triple Threat here. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, what are you guys doing on the on the side? I know, uh, obviously, you know, uh, you're you know spending time with the family, things of that nature. But business wise, what else are you? What else are you? Else are you um, sorry, I mean, it, honestly, it, I'm pretty much just for me. Um, I, it's a lot of writing. I, you know, I did a, a show a couple of years ago on, on BT with, with Irv Gotti and, and Kimberly Harrison was our showrunner. And it, it didn't go through. Um, it was really great. We, you know, we wrote a season of the show and it, obviously with uh, COVID and everything, it didn't get mm-hmm. picked up. But that just inspired me to just kind of keep writing. So my, my whole thing is writing and producing right now. And I think hopefully... Um, I, I want to say, you know, some sometime later this year, I'll, I'll probably have something that, you know, uh, I can shoot because I'm in the middle of writing a, an, another feature film right now. 
So I, I can get the gang together and we can shoot something. But I think outside of the family, I'm just concentrated on, on writing every day. If I'm not auditioning every day, I'm, I'm writing and, and, and just uh, working on projects that I have that I'm pitching. I'm pitching a few projects right now, a few pilots right now. So um, I'm just trying to stay in the zone with that. I, I think pretty much acting, writing, and producing is my life you know, professionally outside of, uh, outside of my family, you know, um, that, that's it. That's what we do. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, I think we're, we're more f focused on that. And sometimes you get in, um, in a bit of a wheel spin mm -hmm. as, as far as work. And for me, I, that, that I love it because I have personally, I have everything that, I, I I want. I have mm -hmm. a, an amazing family, a, a crazy supportive wife, the kids that that I love, and I mean, you know, life is good. I, outside of that, everything else is secondary. But mm -hmm. if, you know, when I if I have to immerse myself in something, it's going to be a creative work. You know, makes sense. Yeah. Final question: um, Any th plans for you and Laura Heller to get? Uh, back into the creative juices on a project, you know, congratulations on her getting married too, by the way, but yeah, uh, I any, love uh, <laughs> uh, any uh, uh, plans for you guys to work together? Um, yeah. You know, Laura, I think we, we, we text like around Christmas and stuff and I congrats on your wedding, Laura. You're fantastic. I love her. She's super talented young lady. And we, we definitely, most definitely we'll do something else. We always kind of like touch base uh, once in a while and, and kind of like have several ideas that we we, we uh, kind of throw at each other that we, we'd like, you know, each of us to kind of do. So I, I definitely feel like there's something, especially with her, I definitely feel that there's something that we'll have down the pike. I know she has something that she's pitching right now that I can't discuss that's mm -hmm. a fantastic idea. Um, but we always kind of get to a place where we talk every few months. It's like, Hey, what are you doing? You got, I got this. I got that. You ready? When we can, when can we find a schedule yep. to, you know, so I'm letting her settle down. She just got mad a little while ago. So I'm letting that sink in a little bit. Then I'm going to get her. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm going to come at it with something, you know, or you know, she'll come at me. I'm sure. But, uh, we'll, we'll figure something out. That's my girl. Laura Hellers. She's, she's incredible. She's really talented and and uh ambitious mm -hmm. you know love her well thank you again for you know for this opportunity um i know we'll catch each other at some point down the road you'll hit me i'll hit you one of the two yeah, so. no question no question bro you know i always love talking to you man you're, you're a great guy and I'm, I'm happy for everything that you're doing too man it's, it's wonderful no doubt appreciate it stay up man we'll do we'll do Westside, Westside, Westside. Yeah, they got yeah. it, Bobby. Hey. We on the top. Woo, woo. 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 Had to get it with my guys. Never stop. Woo, woo. Mr. Go and split.